my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. I thought I'd just show you something a little different today. It was my charge to make a bunch of deer antler saddles for some mandolins. I got in like five orders yesterday and had none in stock, so it's time to catch up. I just thought you might find it interesting about this antler. Uh, this is just the base of an antler. Uh, what I do is I typically saw them down the middle and when I open them up, I look and see how solid they are. Now this one is really solid. This was the first one I sawed. This, is, this actually happened in this order. I just thought you'd get a kick out of it. The second one I sawed, very solid also. It's got a little bit of porosity, but not a lot. The third one, a little bit more porosity, as you can see here. This uh, the dark area is, is, you know, just literally porosity. It's, it's just open holes areas. The uh, fourth one, uh, a little bit more. This actually happened in this order. I'm not kidding. And finally, the fifth one says, you better just quit while you're ahead. Look how holy that one is. And you notice how thin the wall is. Well, I really can't make a saddle out of this one. This one here is probably going to go to waste. Um, it'll be maybe big enough to make a nut out of, but I've got so much extra material that making nuts is very easy. I just thought I'd show you that just so you could tell why I need so much deer antler all the time. And I need the bases primarily because the bases, believe it or not, are the most solid parts. Now the tips are very solid also, but the problem with the tips are they're just small and they're usually skinny and not big enough to make a mandolin saddle. So if you happen to have deer antler laying around, you could send it to me. You could get my address off of my website, www.rosastringworks.com. Thank you for watching.